Oh, hey, howdy, hi, hola, hello, Ohio. This is our little blue dot. This is home. This little marble sitting in the great expanse of nothingness. Everything has ever happened to anybody you've ever heard of happened here. And it's the only place we're going to live during our lifetimes. And that's pretty cool. Because it's home. So we need to, you know, clean our room. And pretty soon. Otherwise, it's going to get out of control. So, let's see about the story of how we came to be. Last time, we talked about the beginning of the universe till well, roughly now, five billion years ago. We're again looking at the major themes of deep time, continuity, change, connection, common unity, culture, colonialism, iteration, and reconfiguration. Mostly deep time today. We're looking today from the beginning of the Earth to the beginning of life. Yes, it took quite a long time from August 31st to September 21st. Took about 21 cosmic days, again, being a metaphor, for life to start up on Earth. I wonder how long it took to get us. Let's find out. Well, we're going to shrink this down to basically September, October, November, and December of the cosmic year. And you can see these little symbols in the middle. They're talking about the energy history of Earth. Again, this is a social studies class. What are we doing? Well... We're learning about where we came from and about all the stuff and all the energy and all the information that had to come true to make this moment possible. Again, we are a one in four trillion miracle. That's how rare it is to be alive in the form you are now. And we're also just water-filled sacks of meat. This is the story of how all that happened. Now... You can see here, I put what each of these symbols uh, and some more. Uh, SpongeBob is awesome. I can't believe I put that in there. Um, <laughs> uh, basically, the story of life on Earth uh, and all these symbols are when they happened. As you can see, as you get to the end of December, that's when you start seeing insects and reptiles and amphibians and trees start to actually come into being. Apes didn't happen until, you know, the middle of December. We're barely at the edge of this map still. Let's find out how we got there. So we're discussing today life on Earth from a quote-unquote deep time orbit, how life on Earth came to be. Again, what is the size of the boundary? What is the setting? What is the context we're looking at? Well, the window we're looking at this time is not quite 14 billion years. It's four and a half billion years. So we're, you know, we're young. We're young. We're very young. We're a third, a little more than a third of the age of the universe. We're babies. And compared to the Earth, we're even smaller babies. So you can see at the top of this image a dude and other dudes and a dude's dog and a dude's truck. At the top, that's where we are. And all these other things happened before we were even here. Before life was even here, it goes even further down. Okay? Now, we think that life started pretty darn early. And it may have started several times, but um, we're going to talk about the time that we're pretty sure about. So, if you've ever stepped back and looked at the Earth, it's pretty beautiful. It's spectacular. And it's hard for us to remember that we're part of this beauty. Yeah, we soil it. Yeah, we destroy it. Yeah, we capture it for our own uses too much. But man, if we can just remember every once in a while that each of us, you, me, all of us together, are part of that beauty. And we have a responsibility to that beauty. Well, where did it come from? Hmm. There are many religious ideas, belief systems, that basically articulate how the world came to be. The truth is, we don't really know. Um, I like many of the stories. I find them beautiful. Uh, but we're going to, again, talk about the scientific understanding of how did things go from not alive to alive? 
Well, we don't know. Not for 100% sure. Not yet. But I have a feeling in my lifetime or the next, or maybe your lives, we're going to figure out how it was done, how it occurred. And yes, random chance over large periods of time can make it happen. Now, in the beginning, there was just solar energy and tectonic energy. The plates, the churning of the mantle and the rocks of the earth themselves, all coming together, friction and solar energy from about 2. Uh, 4.28 billion to 3.8 billion years ago. The earth was just this hell. It was a literal hell, just... Just yeah, it was it was it was rough living unless you like the heat. Um, and even then, there were parts of the Earth that were still very 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 cold as you get closer and closer to the ocean floor, until you get to the huge energy next to the ocean floor coming from the center of the Earth itself. Now, the oldest dated rocks we have on Earth are about four point two eight billion years old. Uh, we found them in Australia and in northern Canada, which kind of blows my mind that those two areas were very, very similar and used to be connected. Yes, it's the same kind of rock, one in the far north and one in the far south. And it wasn't until really September 16th on our cosmic calendar that these rocks even happened. But even at this point, we think there was life around, but we don't have any definitive proof yet. We, again, know that there were solar energies and tectonic energies, but those two energies combined in such a way, churned up the earth in such a way, put so much energy and matter, mixing it and mixing it over large, large chunks of time, that chemical energies started getting made. Yes, all of these little things, these amino acids that make up our DNA and RNA, that make the, the meat suit that is us, and the chemicals within us, all of them were built in these earliest years of Earth. Now, there was nothing using them, but these things existed. Organic molecules basically means oxygen-centric and carbon-centric uh, molecules. That's a fancy way of saying molecules that use a lot of carbon and molecules that use a lot of oxygen. Um, these are high energy and also stable uh, well, <laughs> carbon's more stable than oxygen, but oxygen's the energy, carbon's kind of the stability. So you have this yin and this yang, this creation and destruction, this energy and matter balance happening in these amino acids. Well, eventually, there was nothing <laughs> for a very, very long time. Uh, you know, from the creation of the Earth and the Sun on approximately the 1st of September, um, till the 20th, nothing was happening. It was just a huge soup of chemicals and energy and matter on the planet. We have no idea what it looked like because, again, Entertainment Tonight and TMZ hadn't been invented. Well, somehow, around September 21st, somehow, we don't really understand. We have some theories. We have some hypotheses. We don't know for sure. The first prokaryotic life, the first bacteria and archaea became alive somehow and we think it happened in these undersea vents in fact one of the guys leading this um, search for understanding his name is Andreas Wagner and he played bass in the salsa band I play in which I think is pretty cool he'll probably eventually win a Nobel Prize but again about 4.1 to 3.4 billion years just the earth was turning out all this energy with all these amino acids somehow life got started these single cell organisms okay very simple life and they just for a very 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 long time just hung out reproduced that was it they took advantage of the heat and the chemicals in the water of the earth and they used those to survive and reproduce that was it that's what they used that was it most of it looked like this it looked like the ooze on your toilet it looked like the mold in your refrigerator it looked like the san juan river when it's low Okay, all this cyanobacteria, all this muck is just sitting around stinking up the place. And yet that muck is what made us possible because out pooped oxygen from these animals. They sucked in carbon dioxide and pooped out oxygen. Thank you, microscopic poop. Um, so the early Earth 
would have looked something like this. Red sky. Yes! The sky would have been red. Why? Because when the sunlight, when photons hit, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide reflects back red. It's a similar idea to why our sky is blue. Our sky is blue because when the sunlight hits a nitrogen atom, it reflects back blue. So our sky is a result, the color of our sky is a result of an interaction between the gases on this planet and the sun itself, which I think is pretty cool. So October 12th, basically the whole planet was covered in this muck. And that was it for a very, very long time. October 12th to December 8th, 2.7 to 1.6 billion years ago. It was just this muck. That's all it was. There was nothing there. Well, okay, there was a lot there, just nothing we would recognize as life. Uh, you know, several dozen feet of this muck down on the surface of the ocean and going all the way down to the bottom. It was just muck. It was just this stuff. But wait, something happened. And these animals, which were, they were very few, it was very low variety, started combining. They started coordinating. They started cooperating. They started collaborating. They started communicating within one another. Yeah, they would live inside of each other. And that's when we got something called eukaryotes, multicellular life. You and I are eukaryotes. And so are crustaceans, so are rats, so are giraffes, <laughs> so are trees. All the things that we, that we think of as life, they're eukaryotic. And they all work because of coordination, cooperation, collaboration, and communication. Those are the hallmarks of what we consider life on this planet. So the original life looked kind of, well, weird. <laughs> Again, life doesn't have to um, actually meet any definition in our heads. So the earliest life and the earliest multicellular life we've seen in the fossil record, this is what they look like. They look pretty weird. It looked like some space alien. You can see the things that look like jellyfish. Uh, some of the oldest uh, multicellular life on the planet are jellyfish. Well, so what? What happened? How did that become us? Well, more collaboration, more competition, more cooperation, all of that kept going. And we kept getting more and more and more diversity, more variety among the animals. And then suddenly... There was so much oxygen that had been pooped out into the atmosphere by these cyanobacteria that oxygen saturated into the rocks, soaked up in the rocks. It finally, so much oxygen had been produced that the animals in the area, which, you know, we call Earth, <laughs> those animals, oh my God, started using oxygen as an energy source. And the Cambrian explosion happened where the number and the variety of species on this planet exploded. Therefore, we call it an explosion. Um, the number of species can't even be captured in any one picture. It's just, it's impossible to understand how much more diverse life came on the Earth uh, at that time. And to be honest, it came at a cost. Remember those bacteria, those, that muck? Well, they didn't like oxygen. In fact, it was a waste product. There was so much of it, they were choking themselves out. And eventually, that's what caused them, in a sense, to become plants and trees. We'll get into that a little bit later. So now we have trees. We have these plants. We have this Cambrian explosion of all this diversity. This is still only December 5th through the 17th. Oh my gosh! We're recent additions. Well, the Ordovician period, where there were, yes, 30-foot uh, tall mushrooms... Of course, humans weren't around like we see in the picture, but they were these huge mushrooms and these weird looking plants, uh, which are computer generated here. Guys, the plants started getting onto the land. There was no more room in the ocean, so they started finding ways to live on the land. And they kept producing more oxygen, which caused more and more diversity to explode all over the planet. It's what turned our skies from red to to uh, blue. It's pretty incredible. Well, uh, the Ordovician period, once everything started getting onto land, created the Carboniferous periods. Now, 
you're like, who cares about all this stuff? Well, actually, if you've ever been in a car, if you've ever used anything made of plastic, um, in fact, the laptop you're using right now has huge amounts of plastic in it. That plastic used to be those cyanobacteria and all that stuff in the ocean settled to the bottom of the ocean. And it built up and it eventually became oil. The stuff that was on the land and it all fell down on top of each other. There was no bacteria, no insects to eat all that wood. And guess what? It just piled up and piled up and piled up and eventually got covered by other sand and that became coal. The very things that power our civilization, the very stuff that we turn into energy, that we can turn into the information to watch this video, it all came from this period, 470 to 306 million years ago. And we're burning it all up now. We've burnt up over half of it in 150 years. Something tells me we can't continue on this way and survive. Maybe we'll figure it out here in class. Well, the late Carboniferous period, 306 million years ago, resulted in, again, more oxygen and more diversity. It's awesome. All these weird looking things. If we went in a time machine to this period, we would not recognize it. We would see certain dinosaurs that we may have played with as children, but man, there was some weird stuff going on. Body types and experimentation that were caused by variation and error. Again, the oil and natural gas that we use today to power our civilization all came from this era. This is uh, coal on the left. You can see methane bubbles on the right, which is natural gas, and you can see oil coming directly out of the ground in Pennsylvania on the right and the bottom. All of this stuff now powers our civilization. We are literally burning the dead so that we may live. <laughs> That's some cool poetry. Well, again, this has taken us from Dece to December 21st to December 22nd. What happens after this? The time... The age, the epoch of giant insects. Yes, these are, these are actual sizes of these unbelievably huge insects. Now, how could insects be so big then and be such smaller things now? It's pretty simple. Insects breathe by having openings in uh, their skin. I believe they're called uh, something like stomata, although it might be plants. That the, the detail of that word doesn't matter. But insects, there was so much oxygen, they could grow to really big size because they could pull in the oxygen through their body. So you have these massive beetles, huge dragonflies. Look at the centipede on the right and the top. I don't think he's dancing with them. I think he's lunch. Well, these insects, remarkably, remarkably successful on the planet. For every human being, there's about... Um, an estimated 100 billion insects. It's an incredible thing. In, alien species would know that we could communicate, but they would argue that insects co-owned the planet with us. So again, oh, all this beauty and this diversity, thank goodness we weren't around, we would have been lunch. So food, eating each other, became hugely important. Everything started eating itself. <laughs> Uh, or eating each other, I should say. Well, every once in a while they eat uh, themselves, if they were hungry, I suppose. Um, but yeah, flesh became a huge energy source on the planet. Well, what happened between December 22nd and December 27th is unbelievable. December 20th, plants move from water to land. December 21st, insects and seeds move onto land. December 22nd, amphibians evolve. December 23rd, reptiles evolve. December 25th, Merry Christmas, dinosaurs rule over the planet. December 26th, mammals evolve. December 27th, birds evolve. December 28th, the first flowers evolved from existing plant life. Oh my gosh, flowers didn't even exist until December 28th of the cosmic year. But then something happened and our poor little dinosaur friends stopped becoming dominant on the planet. December 30th, 6.24 a.m. on the cosmic calendar, a meteor off the Yucatan Peninsula kills most of the dinosaurs. Now, we think that the meteor killed off the dinosaurs. We used to think that. But during my lifetime, during my adult life, um, which started really in 1997, we started to understand it wasn't quite that simple. There was a bunch of um, volcanoes exploding in a place today we call Siberia. 
All of that was choking off the sun. And check this out. The meteor slammed off of the Yucatan and hit a giant deposit of sulfur. Now, the sulfur kind of stinks. If you've ever, ever been in a hot springs, it's one of the reasons that it stinks. One of the reasons. Um, but that sulfur, is, if it gets in the air, is really good at blocking out the light. And so guess where the meteor hit? It hit an area with a lot of sulfur. So it basically, the dinosaurs were already getting beat up, and the meteor finished them off. But thankfully, all of that energy represented by the terrible lizards, the dinosaurs, all that energy became usable by another type of animal that had already existed for a short time. But mammals started to take over. We started taking over the space and the food that the dinosaurs used to eat. We used to be the food! Ha! Huh, and it's awesome! Huge numbers of mammals start exploding. It's uh, the mammalian explosion at the time. But it was really recently, December 31st, apes evolved for the first time. 6.05 a.m. Um, hominids, human-like ancestors, <coughs> about 12.3 million years ago, they emerged. December 31st, 2.24 p.m. New Year's Eve, 10.24 p.m. Homo sapiens finally joined the party 2.5 million years ago. December 31st at 11.44, we finally stopped being afraid of and start using fire. <laughs> December 31st at 11.59 and 32 seconds, we finally invent farming. We haven't even gotten to America yet. Let's see about next time where we learn the story of how humanity came to be we.